Yeah, yeah. Daniel, just your thoughts on the mining industry. I mean, I know you've been in the technology space, but I know you're very well versed in current affairs. And um, I don't know if you've had any experience in the mining industry just to help this question that we've got here. You know, that's that's we've got family who live in, in Rustenburg and they are making huge money in mining, mining safety, mining equipment. They're doing so well. So there's always going to be, but it's um, it's quite a small environment. So it, it's, it's well known by the people who are in there and a new entrant, you're going to pay big money to get in there. So you've got to have something which is unique to get in, but there's still lots of money. However, if you have to look at urban mining and green mining and this new economy that's coming out, um, which is about sustainability, that's a new industry. So your barriers to entry are lower. And Africa is ripe for this. So clean energy, green energy, mining. So so taking in Ghana and Accra, where they are, are um, um, have been infamous for um, being the, the, the dump of techno from the first world for so long, burning it down and getting out gold, uranium and all the rest of it. There is potential for big money from turning waste into worth. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I mean, if you're a young entrepreneur, which is not connected by people who own countries and that, then maybe look at something. You always want to look at your barriers to entry and your chance of success. I mean, I would love to get into music. I, I'd love to be a musician. But I'm a cuck singer and I'm not great at guitar. So, you know, why would I put my future in there? Uh, there was an interesting TED talk about um, what do we do with our kids? Do we let them work in the area of gifting and, and where, how do we advise them, you know, to on where to go and let them follow their dreams and passion? And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it on your channel, Pete, but, but the, the, the conclusion was that's cuck. Don't let your kids do that. Let them work in an area of opportunity where they can yeah. use their gifting. So yeah. you want to be clever. Um, there is a river of money that's going through the world, the whole economy, the, it's running. And you want to be able to access that. And you can access it via bucket or you can access it via pipeline of money. You need to be, it doesn't help if the river is here and you are over there. You're not going to yeah. get access to it. So, you know, then you've got to be thinking quite cleverly on how you do it. So look at the barriers to entry. Look who's in there. You know, by your surname, I think you're from Zimbabwe. You know, do you have any contacts in the mining industry that have come from Zim or, or wherever you are? Then go in there with your eyes open. But, uh, yeah. That's yeah. just an old... Daniel, thank you. I, I saw we had a couple of comments there, just people in jewellery. Uh, there was somebody talking about jewellery there. Uh, there was somebody talking about being in the fitness uh, industry there, Nike, Adidas, etc. I mean, I guess, you know, without knowing the backgrounds of these people um, you know, that are asking these questions, I mean, your advice sort of would be as well, do you follow your passion and what you're, mm. you know, you mm. are aware of and think you can do well, or do you go and look for the opportunity and adapt your skills and your, your value mm. proposition? Mm. So I want to go back to the, go back to the jewelry person and then we'll get to Tabo. Um, the, I have a 14 year old who is very artsy and, and she wants to write and, and she wants to write stories and books and, and all the rest. There's no apprenticeship program for her. It's, it's very different in the jewelry environment where there are some well-established good names of jewelers who have made their name over years. But unfortunately, they tend to keep their secrets quite closely guarded. And they wouldn't, it's, you're in the arts, you've got to get over yourself and carry on. If you think that that's where you want to be, then you need to carry on. The problem with handmade African jewelry is everybody from Africa thinks they can make it. So you need to create a uniqueness, a unique selling point for yourself. Work on your brand. Don't just look, work on the jewelry. Work on the packaging around the jewelry and how you get noticed in that environment. But it is an uphill battle. 
The reason it's an uphill battle is because you'll make a shitload of money if you get it right. You'll make a lot of money. Sorry, Pete, you can edit that out if you get it right. Um, but th but that, that, that road is a rocky, hard road. Do it. And then you can make it. But uh, you're looking at 15, 20 years. So, you yeah. you know, like, get over yourself. Go and do it. Uh, regarding do it. Mr. Schumann. Yes. I'll find also, the comment. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Saying you have the same quality as Nike and Adidas when they've got a, 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 a factory of scientists that are making their shoes um, to get into the fitness environment. Um, I, I spend probably 10,000 Rand a year on shoes and that's from running. And, and mm. I only buy two brands of shoes. Okay. So... And, and the reason for that is I'm prone to injury. And I've found through lots and lots of experience, and one day when we we can talk about me going in for almost an operation when it was something else, but so that's a very specialized environment. For Tabo, I would suggest that you you then, either you're gonna walk door to door like the, the, the founders of Nike, and find an athlete to sponsor and get your brand out there, same as the, the previous one, or you need to sell that concept into them in their development program. So, you know, the, the internet is there. Get a Wix website, yeah. start branding.